The victim and I. Um, I... I admit I was there. <laughs> but I'm not a killer! All I did was find his body! <laughs> Sorry, I actually had something in my throat. <laughs> uh, I hardly knew the guy to begin with. I never even talked to that stuck a British wannabe. Oh, he's a Brit. Huh. Yeah, I don't like him. I'm mm, with Phoenix on this I one. I see, so you hardly knew the victim. Yes, I hardly knew the British wannabe. And that's still going to be used against him, but still. <laughs> Right, like I said, I'm not a killer! You, so the judge understands. Mm, you're being naive, you know. Too naive. Huh? It's so weird not being the defense I attorney! Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten about one small thing, young lady. What yeah, the I hair? know. It's, yeah, I can't keep my eyes off it when it ever shows. And that would be? This witness still has to undergo something called cross examination. Cross examination? Is right, and it's the defense steward to carry out this cross examination. The purpose is to determine if the witness testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions? If a witness is lying, a statement will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Wright is my client. Even if he is your client, in court all lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty, you see. What does he mean by that? He's saying the testimony just now that there was a lie? A contradiction? Now then, your cross-examination, if you please, Miss Fay. Please, Miss Wright, tell me you haven't been lying. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? Don't worry, even if I'm lying, I can just, you know, say the thing like 20 more <laughs> times. <laughs> I was there. That's cool, I really like it her that says it. When you say there, you mean the place where the victim was murdered? You know, according to the holder, her voice is a lot higher. Yeah, I know, but I cannot do that. It's like, hold it! But I cannot do that. Yeah, sort of. The place where something happened anyway. <laughs> that is... Oh my god, Phoenix. Huh, why, why? I wonder! Why? Why, Phoenix? Did you catch that? It's the place where something happened anyway. <laughs> oh my god. Damn thing! You can't hide what that happened. We have photographic evidence. <laughs> oh my god. At least the voice is matching this case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Mr. Wright, what were you doing at the scene of the crime? I thought you said you didn't know the victim, Mr. Swallow. It was just a coincidence. We bumped into each other by accident, damn Brit. A coincidence, huh? But I'm not a killer, all I did was find his body. You said you found the body. So who called the police? Huh? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it was some other students that notified the police. Other students? That's correct, they were witnesses. Or they were witnesses. Witnesses who saw the defendant standing there next to the body in shock. Um, where's the electrical line? That's a good question. What? Is this true, Mr. Wright? I'm not even gonna keep trying to keep up with this. You stop sneezing every time you're in a bind? No. Well, it's true that I was pretty shocked when I found the body, but but I hardly knew the guy to begin with. So you didn't know his face or you his name, right? Right. Um, well, no, that is, I mean. So, which is it? You know him or not? Now see here, you can't avoid answering the question by sneezing all day. Watch me. Err, uh, um, well... Uh, I guess I did know his name. News to me? Why didn't he tell me that before? Um, I heard he used to date Dolly. Who is this Dolly person? That's obviously Hawthorne. Ah yes, that would be the defendant's lover, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, I see. Ah, young love. So bittersweet. But that's all I knew about him. Never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. Oh dear. <laughs> How do you know he's British? Mr. Wright, you stated the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. Th th that th That's right. I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him, then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? He actually has a cold! 
<laughs> I think he just knows how to sneeze on command. Well, Mr. Wright? Ah, no, it wasn't me. I'm not a killer, I swear. Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. Nah, now how is it that you knew the victim uh, was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Stuck up, British wannabe, your honor. Y yes, well, he was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back oh, of his oh, shirt. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of a clear sell. Sure. <laughs> what is he? A British American? <laughs> The British equivalent of an American, I should say. Or, you know, he could just be very much into British rock. That, that, people with Union Jacks tend to, you know, walk around with that, you know? Did you see that, did you see that the crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean? Uh, y yes, that's right. I saw it at the crime scene. You did? That's why... That's why I figured he must love British stuff, see? It's true! Cross my heart! Like, it would not surprise me if, uh, if he was actually a Beatles fan, like, you know, uh... Uh, swallow. He might have been very mu big into, you know, old-style British rock. That's pretty normal. Damn, Brit. <laughs> I swear I didn't do it. It's acting fishier than the salmon, salmon I ate last night. Wow. May I ask you something, Miss Faye? Uh, yes, Your Honor? What is it now? Who is this person anyway? This unit. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> no! That the British flag is called the Union Jack! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I was even you knew that. <laughs> yes, trust me. I. Why do you think I said he's like a Brit? He's a British equivalent American. Americans are wearing the American flag. Oh my god! Okay, that's the stereotype, anyway. Okay. Who is this person, anyway? This Union Jack fellow. <laughs> the Union Jack is the name of the United Kingdom's flag. Oh, I see. So you mean like the stars and stripes, right? Yeah. As usual, you are not your insight as down to me. <laughs> oh, I like this. Hey, something just occurred to me. Isn't there something strange about this bit just now? Mia, there is a contradiction here. Mr. Grossberg, quickly now, show that you, the boy, you mean business, with evidence I mean. Okay, Mia, check the court record carefully. Well, my dear, do you think you can manage on your own from this point? I think we can handle it. Do you even know what's going on? Yeah, because if you look at the photo, there's no Union Jack. There's no Union. Oh yeah. There's no Union Jack on his coat. Well, I think we can. I can handle it myself. One year ago, I was in a courtroom just like this. I can do it. I can handle this myself. Mm. You mustn't try to bite off more than you can chew, Mir. I'll be fine. I know what I have to do. Remember, you can always press in to get more information. Oh, and one more thing. When you're going to state a contradiction, make sure you present some definitive proof. Okay, Mia, one more time. From the very beginning of his testimony, body, blah, 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 blah. He's always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. I mean, technically, he's wearing a coat. Yeah. But I, we, think. But I cannot see a Union Jack here. Attention. Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Y yeah, I'm sure. It was right on there on his back. Oh, no. Miss Ferry, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey! Wait a minute! He's wearing a leather jacket! The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing! I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. But if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know Dad, would you? You'd have no idea at all what he was wearing underneath that jacket! I can't get over her hair covering an eye! <laughs> Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me. <laughs> He's <very good. laughs> Here, you made a flying cry. He deserved it. Let him. That pee on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix anyways. What? I can't believe I trusted him. This right was all wrong. <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. I, I bet that he stands for princess or something. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. Well, it actually does stand for Phoenix. It, it well, was meant be. to, and it was a gift from his girlfriend. That's true, it could be that. That's true. I mean, he calls her Dolly, so... She, this, um, she probably would have a nickname for him, too. Probably. It's quite clear that this man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. Uh, uh oh, did I go too far? Yes. By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I, um, yeah 
took some, but... Was the medicine that you took an over-the-count brand called Cold Killer X? Yeah, that's right. It kills colds good. Hey, wait a second. How would you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Would he even be allowed to have that medicine on him right now? I don't think so. Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. Somehow. He lost it? Does this even have anything to do with the case? He lost it next to the dead body. It's alright. Shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Is it in your hair that you keep hitting? <laughs> huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take a look at another look at another photo from the crime scene. Another photo? What's this? It, in the victim's hand, it's it's Cold Killer X. Yes, but even I, even I've got a bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment. That must be a very popular brand. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument would work. It's probably just like Tylenol or something. It's something everyone knows, and it's just a huge brand. Yeah. Or Advil or whatever. I don't know what is the cold killer X of our world. There's no doubt as to who this bottle of cold killer X belongs to. Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints are all over it. What? Sensing his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine and dropped by Mr. Wright and hid it in his hand. His purpose in doing so, he can only have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright. Wait, how? These cases never make sense. Order! Order in the court! Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well. The court will accept them into the record. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. The victim's watch uh, stopped at the time of death. Yeah, I know. Also, the victim's miswatch was broken. That is 3.05. Yeah, I think so. Dish. But it's not exactly a 3. No, it's not. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Obviously. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of explanation for all of this? Uh, yes, Mr. Payne. I have the ability to electrocute anyone I touch. That would be kind of power to have. Ugh. Like, what are they telling me I did? That I electrocuted a guy? Yeah, how? This is really bad. Oh, my buttocks. My poor, poor hemorrhoids. Grossberg, stop. <laughs> At least we now know why I know that he is old if he has Embrox. <laughs> the truth is, I went because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 245 behind that building. We talked for a bit, and then around 3, we split up. Then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Mr. Wright, that's completely different from the testimony you gave previously! I, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your testimony any more credible. Uh, Miss Faye, please begin your cross-examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright. Don't tell any more lies. It's not a lie. It's just not telling the full truth. Okay, I went because I was called. Had you ever met the victim before then? No, never. But that day, he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. And this Dolly person is... We've been over this, Your Honor. <laughs> my, um, it's kind of embarrassing. She's my, um, sweetheart. Oh, what, what was that for, Mia? <laughs> Did she just Did she slap him? I think, I think she slapped him. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just felt like slapping something all of a sudden. <laughs> Daya Hoffman was also the lover of the murder victim, Dark Swallow, before she made Mr. Right. Hmm. So it's one of those nasty love triangles, I see. He was in the pharmacology department. I'm fairly sure that's just like the people who work in pharmacies and stuff. Yeah, a little present. Which does require a lot of training. Yeah, it does. It requires so. a lot of training. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah, and we were both there right on time. Hmm, your center victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Yeah, yeah, okay. Everyone called him the alchemist of IVU. Oh, so, oh he, no. so he was probably not a, the alchemist. He was probably a prodigy then. No, nope, he was so making drugs on the side and selling them to people. Yeah, yeah, I've heard some people actually do that if they're good at it. An alchemist, I see. I gotta admit, it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. Wow. It was filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. 
Oh, how fascinating. <laughs> Sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe to ask him for some more details. Uh... Well, Mia? I'm not sure if he actually... About the timing of the meeting. So you're absolutely certain that you met at 2.45? Yeah, pretty sure. That's the time class ends. But they're always doing experiments, so it doesn't matter much. Experiments? Yeah, those pharmacology guys are always in the lab whipping up something. Well, it looks like he's right about the time anyway. Hey, this, please, let's go on with your testimony. Fascinating. Talked for a bit, and then at around three, we split. So what was it you were talking about? You know... <laughs> That maybe we should hang out again no, sometime. No, Phoenix. I can't I, take him seriously. Phoenix, don't lie. Hang out again sometime. I wish that were true. Later, when I went back, I found him lying there. So we know there's an issue here. Yeah. So you say you went back? Um, yeah. That's when I found the body. Yes, but why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, th that's right. I was. Was I? Uh huh? Now that's a contradiction. Then why, Mr. Wright? Why did you go back there? Um, I thought maybe we could make up? Uh, okay. I don't think anyone Nobody buys that. believes it. I don't think anyone buys that. <laughs> Jesus. Achoo. Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one is buying this. I've been taking cold collects for the last two to three days. It's rather unusual to catch a cold this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in spring, huh? That's why you got a cold, you idiot! It's the most common sense is not always common. So, did anyone else know that you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You have friends? Yeah, that actually shocks me. Phoenix has friends. <laughs> but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. On the day of the incident? What do you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly. Just the two of us. Oh. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest! Mmm! Her mini omelets are magically delicious. <laughs> I already- I've already figured it out. Ouch! Why did you punch me in the jaw? <laughs> Damn! Yeah, <laughs> Mia, you're violent! Oh! I'm so sorry. I just feel like hurting someone all of a sudden. Okay, Mia, do you have issues with, like, love or something? I think she does. But wait. With who? I'm confused now. <laughs> well, Mia, I don't know. I can't just seem to find any contradictions. The boy is exactly what I'd call a natural-born liar, you know. But still, we can't have him continue to spout nonsense. I know. What can I do? Well, I'm certain he must be still hiding something. Information. Right now, it's information we need more than anything else. So I think we need to go back to where we got the choices. And we need to ask... That was this one, right? I think so. Yeah, and we asked about the pharmacology department. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. That's right. And they sure look dangerous. Oh, yeah. They use non-standard voltages, so there are high-voltage cables everywhere. Oh, I get it. That's why he was able to die from a shock. Because they have to divert specific high-voltage cables to power those machines. Instead of normal cables. Mm hmm High voltage cables? Yeah. There were electrical poles set up all around the building. That sounds very dangerous. The high voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally. I think we're getting somewhere. I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. And then the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle either. Yeah, but how would I electrocute him to death? Yeah, that's a good question. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Okay, Frank. The testimony cannot be trusted. They gasp. What do you mean? <laughs> so let me get this straight. You can't trust Phoenix's testimony, but you trust everyone else's testimony. Just off the <laughs> bat. Ah, the double standards. I knew it was too much work for a little girl. <laughs> However, there is one mystery that still remains. It is, Your Honor. How the murder was carried out, of course. Yes, don't forget, he was electrocuted to death. Yeah, by a high voltage cable. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? Well, that is, uh... You are correct, Your Honor. How exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I could still come out of this mess smelling like a rose. I think I know. 
I mean... You can see the cable. Yeah, you can see the broken cable. And I don't see a way Phoenix could have broken it. Yeah, me neither. I think the cable... Like, that would be really dangerous to break. Period. Yeah, I think the cable snapped and hit his umbrella. So, establish a murder method? Yeah. Your Honor. Yes, Miss Faye? I believe that if we were to piece together everything we've heard up, up until now, we should be able to solve this the mystery of how Mrs. Swallow died. Oh, that smug look yeah, on her face. Yeah, she looks actually pretty smug. That would be the most impressive. <laughs> Quite the brash statement from coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes? An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. <laughs> of course I know that. Actually, I had totally forgotten about that. <laughs> now then, Miss Faye, let me see what you've got. Tell me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. Be sure to... Yeah. As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture catches it quite well. What? But there's nothing that even motive is in a murder weapon here. Because there was no murder weapon. Hmm. I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly in the photo is the murder weapon? The cable. The broken cable. It's this umbrella, Your Honor. <laughs> like, obviously, it's that broken I'm cable right there. Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... that's... what is that? A severed electrical cable, I believe? Oh, that's Mia. My, my bad. <laughs> a severed... Man, Mia, your voice <laughs> changed a lot! <laughs> a severed electrical, electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember, the testimony we've heard, the machines at the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. That is a hard word for me to say, holy shit. You know who I want to see in this timeline? Hmm? I want to see Maya. Yeah. She would be like 13 right now. I want to see adorable 13-year-old Maya. That's true. And because of that, there are special high-voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then the high-voltage cable? Yes, the high-voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. Hmm. That certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high-voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what really, what that really implies. That Phoenix cut a high-voltage cable? Which he obviously wouldn't, because that would have mean he would have electrocuted himself. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The defendant! The logic I'm assuming Payne is going with here is the cable was already snapped. Ah. And it or just snapped, and Phoenix like pushed him into it or something. Oh, yeah, because if you caught a high That's the only logic that works. Yeah, it only just snapped. Because if you caught a high voltage cable while the power is still on, you are gonna get electrocuted. But it had to have just snapped, otherwise they'd have shut the power down. Yeah. To that cable. For, you know, safety. Stop sneezing, you look suspicious. Hmm, that much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. You do? Irrefutable proof that will establish Mr. Wright was the murderer. You do? What, what is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Yeah, yeah, leather does. We do know that quite well. We literally won a case because of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mean? Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest of area of the victim's jacket. You were right. The palm print of the very defendant's very own hand. W what? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright could have left a print like that. Intent on murder. He squarely pushed the victim towards the severed electrical cable. Order, order, order! That's enough. I think we can conclude that there's no reason to continue with this cross-examination. Stick a fork in us, we're done. Mr. Grossberg? My hemorrhoids never lie. The show is over, Mia. Will you stop talking about your hemorrhoids? <laughs> I know that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. No, you're wrong! Mr. Wright is innocent! No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Y your Honor! This time, I am prepared to render a verdict in this case. Do you have something further to add, Miss Faye? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth. The whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But, but I, I can't. I, I just can't say it. If I told you what really happened, then I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. M Miss Faye. 
No matter what it is you have to say, I believe in you and I'll represent you to the very end. We've already established the defendant's guilt. There's no further need for him to say anything. Wait a minute. It's right. I... I'll tell you what really happened. But I've already told you, Mr. Wright. There's no need to for further... <laughs> I... I... I did it. I admit it. I pushed him. It's my fault. My... My fault that D Doug Swallow died. That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey! It's none of your business! I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're, you're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! D don't talk about her like that! What you just said? Was that the truth? Wait, he pushed him, but the dude landed on his back. Yeah. Y yes, I... I was afraid. Afraid that if I told the truth, everyone think I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, we absolutely convinced you all. Please! Please give me one more chance to explain. Uh, this time I swear. I swear I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay. Won't it, Miss Faye? I... I believe in you! Oh, um, thank you. Look, I believe it. You really did push the victim. Uh, it feels like my head are doing the Harlem Shake. <laughs> Stop it! Did you say Harlem Shake? <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, that guy. He was talking bad about Dolly. And he landed on his back. I lost my temper and gave him a shove. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he, he was just lying there, dead. Well, the explanation is really quite simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock, and that, as they say, is that. Hmm. Simple explanation indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. Right from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. That is, uh, that's, that's true, that can happen. But when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. That's true. Even a do doofus like Kim could miss that. Hmm. Miss Faye, let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he is innocent, must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. There is. His watch. Yeah, the watch. The watch says 305. Yeah. The autopsy says 3. Yeah. So there's something there. That guy was talking bad about Dolly. How dare he? So what kind of things did Mr. Swallow say to you? He said all sorts of terrible things about Dolly. He said that she was a bad girl. Um, is that all? Yes. Yep. <laughs> well, Miss Faye, you heard him yourself. Miss uh, Dolly was a bad girl. <laughs> oh boy. Not doing yourself any favors here, Mr. Wright. Please don't make this harder for me than it already is. Anyway, after he said that, I just. I just. I lost my temper and gave him a shove. Can you tell me about what happened in a little more detail? That guy. He just said what he wanted to say to me. And then he put on the jacket he was holding and started to leave. That's when... That's when I lost my temper and flew into a furious frenzy. I just gave him a light, gentle shove to the chest. It was on his back. You should probably mention that. And when you did that, there was no separate cable anywhere to be seen. Right! There was nothing like that at all. But is it possible that you merely overlooked it? Well, I guess it's possible. What are you doing? Don't let that guy steamroll over you like a cheap asphalt. I think that's important here is the moment that the push occurred. Let's continue on with the testimony, witness. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. 
A loud oh, noise. Like, <laughs> and what would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I want to be the prosecutor again. <laughs> I'm not sure, but it was really loud. It was like, snap. You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. That is probably the, oh. the cable, you know, snapping. It was Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, your honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. But that wouldn't make a snapping sound, no, it would wouldn't. it? No, it wouldn't. You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? I'm treading on some dangerous ground here. More details. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard may be extremely important. So try to remember what it was. Um, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Ha! Could it... Could it have been... Yes, could it have been? Hurry up and tell us. When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. He fell right on top of it and it broke. Oh. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, huh? And what did, it, did that umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella, cheap and frail. Kind of like the owner. Wow. <laughs> Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. Hmm, Miss Faye, what do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Um, well, he said it was plastic. I mean, plastic can snap. Yeah, so I'd say, I'd say it's somewhat important. Sure. This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. I don't know if this is what you've been waiting for, but it is new. Of course it's important. No, this, um, this team umbrella is more than important. It's vital. Is this where Grossberg comes in and says, uh, no? I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Ha! <laughs> perfectly fitting! Flimsy information for a flimsy liar! Stop with the hair! The court agrees to the defense equip defense's request. Can this please add the beta about the cheap umbrella to your testimony? After I shoved him, he fell down on top of his cheap umbrella. Sure. So Mr. Swallow fell on top of his umbrella, and you're certain of this? Yeah. It was right there under him. Actually, if I hadn't been under him, or if it hadn't been under him, I plan on borrowing it for myself. Don't say that! Oh, the umbrella, you mean? Well, yeah. You see, I was wearing the sweater here. Dolly stayed up late for nights at the at a time knitting it for me. Wow! I didn't want the rain to dampen the handmade symbol of her love. It is Phoenix, then. <laughs> My stomach is not to be, is not to be used as your personal saga, Palmia. <laughs> Why are the women in this universe violent? Mia, do you happen to be friends with a Miss Von Karma? <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, I'm so sorry. Can you end with your testimony, witness? Miss Von Karma would be 13 at this time. I think so, yeah. Oh yeah, she's like the same age as Maya. <laughs> I forgot about that. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. After you shot the victim, did you leave the scene right away? Yes, I did. I admit it. I was furious. You left without even checking Mr. Swallow's condition? Um, he's operating on anger, dude. What do you expect? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, but like I said, I got worried about him later. How much later? I went back, but he was just lying there, dead. At that time, did you see anyone else at the scene of the crime? Um, nope. Nobody. He definitely saw somebody. Jeez, could that stupid car possibly sound any phonier? Hmm. In that case, it's very hard to believe someone else could have been the murderer. Unless we can find something that shows his innocence from the test testimony, my dear. I'm afraid the judge will make his final decision with no remorse whatsoever. Yes, sir. Right now I need more info. If that will help you turn up some contradictions. Uh... He fell down on top of his cheap oh, umbrella. Oh, yeah. Then... Yeah! It's not under him. So, present this here? I think so. Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on. If I had mentioned that, I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What do you mean by that? Taking a look at the crime scene photo, according to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right. The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. No! <laughs> That's my hair! <laughs> order, order, order! The victim, she moved? Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Oh, well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want to present it as evidence immediately. 
Hmm. Found broken the ear and electrical pull at the crime scene. But the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind! According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. Uh, uh, but... I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial, but as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. No, no! No! <laughs> I must say, I still find it hard to believe. A huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. Hey, because it's just, that's all that's got on my testimony. <laughs> the victim fell on top of his umbrella. There was a loud sound when this happened. That's it. That's all I testify. Yes. Well done, me. <laughs> Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was suspecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish skill through cross-examination alone, and my fine hair. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess. You have another witness. Exactly! And this witness testimony will be incontrovertible. Uh, wait, wait. Incontrovertible. In the hell does that mean? Incon incontrovertible. Google it, quickly! Yeah, incontrovertible. Incontrovertible. In the meantime, cannot, we get to watch his hair bounce. Cannot be denied or disputed. Huh. Interesting. Uh, well, who's this witness? It's Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean... Dolly? I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. What? I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Bad news? You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia, what do you mean by that? I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20 minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. A good spot for us to uh, end this episode, I think. Uh, we'll probably end it after this part. Yeah, I probably, think. yeah. <sighs> Miss Faye, I. I'm sorry about what happened back there. I. I. It's alright. At least you told us the truth in the end. Mr. Wright? Yeah. So, I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy! Can't be serious. I thought you such important facts. But, but But the next witness is Dolly, right? She'll save me. I just know she will. She won't. Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She, She's the love of my life. That's why. Oh my god, Phoenix, you're so gullible. Love of your life? Huh. Would you mind telling me more about you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure, no problem. Dolly and I, we first met about eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse. Why were you in the courthouse? That is suspicious. <laughs> Actually, I'm starting to be a lawyer on the side. Anyway, what the hell is that necklace? What the hell is that necklace? Huh, one day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was Faith that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh my god, Phoenix. Oh, here. Take a look at this. She gave this to me the day we met as a symbol of our love. Oh no. Oh no. She had been wearing it around her neck that day, but then she took it off. But before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. I haven't decided on her voice yet. So she gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling little bottle is filled with memories of my darling little dolly. Turn me as a little bottle, all right? It makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. You didn't show it to the judge. <laughs> I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Interesting. <laughs> Present borrowed from Phoenix. He shows it to everyone. <laughs> um, anyway, so after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. <laughs> Please give it back now, what? Oh, what a strange girl asking for a present back like that. Oh, there's something important about that thing, isn't there? Yeah. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne eight months ago, it wouldn't happen to have been on August the 27th, would it? Huh? It, yeah, it was. How did you... This happened on August 27th, right here in this courtroom, courthouse. What's this? A newspaper clipping? Let's see... Murder in the courthouse? M m murder? What are you reading there? Let me see that. Oh, 
I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. You believe there's some connection between these two cases, am I correct? <laughs> um... I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossbeck. Um... Very little information is being disclosed at this time since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district court house cafeteria said to have been a lawyer. However, the police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who was sitting with him. Oh. With the victim. I have a suspicion. Oh, no. I have a suspicion that necklace with the bottle, perhaps it's poison. I, I need to finish this myself. Ah, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look in the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. F thank you. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Well, it looks like recess is about over. Better get moving. I guess so. The recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. No, it didn't. It seemed shorter than yeah, that. Yeah, it seemed much shorter. And this is where we end it. See you next time.